Welcome to Finite Element Methods. In this tutorial, we're going to be discussing how to analyze a launch vehicle that's subjected to a seismic loading condition. The launch vehicle also has to survive those loads, and so we're going to have Li Fu Wang guide us through that exciting tutorial. This approach can also be applied to buildings and other applications of interest. Thank you, Li Fu. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back. And this is the video related to the last problem we have, which is a seismic analysis for given an input file. So we have two input file here, uh, which is VM and the HM. So they are related to a test for earthquake, um, which is vertical amplitude for the, for the, uh, acceleration and the horizontal amplitude for the acceleration. So what you're supposed to do here is with the model dynamics, we're going to use model dynamics for seismic analysis. But for this one, just to make it simple, just to make it simple, we don't need a preload. And we are use a linear analysis for this. So make it much faster. So those two are not the loading conditions we want. We're going to apply the seismic analysis. And after the frequency step, model dynamics. Same thing here, ten, uh, time period is 10 and time increment we use 0 0.05 since the maximum frequency we have Natural frequency we have is around 20. And this time increment should be 1 over 20. And we apply a damping 1 to 200 mode, critical damping 0 0.01. And here is the part. Since for model dynamics, we cannot modify the boundary condition. If you try to modify the boundary condition, you can see uh, if we try to create a boundary condition in the seismic analysis, you can see that we cannot apply, for example, fixed boundary or something. It turns into acceleration-based mode, displacement-based mode, and velocity-based mode. Basically, is based on the base we have, which means the mole shape we have, we add on this reaction like a dynamics or a response by a series of mole shapes. That's how it means. And here we are going to apply the acceler acceleration based motion. I think you learned the series in the class. And since we have two motion, which is horizontal and vertical, that's call horizontal or edge edge acceleration. So this acceleration is going to apply to the entire geometry. So which is equivalent to your trying to move the base because your base is going to stay as zero, always stay as zero, which is the four pin here. So the movement is, let's assume is X direction, so U1. And then uh, the amplitude here is, uh, we're going to use the tab tabular for that, H-A-M-P, horizontal amplitude. And here uh, we right click and read from file. We choose the horizontal amplitude we have. And you can see the first row is related to the name, so we don't need it, just delete it. And whatever left is your amplitude file. All the way to, this is 10 seconds. And here we choose HAMP. And the magnitude for that should be G. And the G uh, is uh, 386 for for our units, that's it. Now uh, we create another one. 
which is the VM, V acceleration. So same thing here, uh, but here we need to use degrees of freedom too. And then the amplitude, same thing, tabular. And here, right click, read from file, choose the VM you have. Uh, we can delete that. VM. Scaling factor is 386. And also in the step uh, field output, we have this field output created. Oh, sorry. We don't have field output created for the seismic analysis. So we create a field output, um, just call it field output five. And then increment one, every increment. And then we only need the stress and displacement. So we actually, so we actually don't need history output. So everything leave it the same. Now let's create a seismic analysis. I can submit. So this is an application for model dynamics. Here you will see um, how does the entire structure moves with the earthquake with a moving base. It will take some time to finish the first step, which is getting the natural frequency. After, th after that, the model dynamic part should be pretty fast. Now you can see how does the result look like. Let's do U and U1 or U amplitude. And then uh, same thing here, step, uh, sorry, in the results active frame, let's hide the first one and let's plot the animation. Oh, sorry, we haven't hide, hide it. Now let's, uh, in the common uh, animations, we can move it slower. You can open here and see how does the frame look like. This is with a very large scaling factor. If you want it to more close to reality, just change it to one. But if you change it to one, you will not see a very significant move. You can see that it's moving. It has a, a probably let's turn turn into ten. So you will see a better vibrations for the animations here, like how the launch vehicle vibrate due to the uh, earthquake. Now, uh. Let's plot the XY data, same as previously. 
create an XY, XY data from a field output and a unique nodal choose U1 here and horizontal displacement, which means, and then uh, add a selection, select the center point, and then we can plot it. Do we deactivate it? Yeah, make sure that you deactivate this one and then plot. Now you can, you can see how does the horizontal displacement looks like when off, for, off the tip looks like. So same thing here, uh, if you, you can output the stress for each, uh, if it is for stress, then it is for each element, it's not for each node. For example, um, if you do stress and one meso stress here, and you saw that probably the maximum stress is somewhere uh, at the element. So we create XY data, field output, and then we uh, we do element nodal and stress component here, choose one mesos and then select the elements we have. Now you can, uh, yeah, I accidentally select U1. Ah, oh, sorry. Here it output, also output U1, but I don't need the U1. I only need the S, so plot it. So this is the st stress for that element or for several nodes. From here, you can obtain the maximum stress of that geometry, of the, of the build you have. So that's it for seismic analysis. And hope that you have learned something from this videos. And uh, before we end, I just want to double mention that if you have any question related to convergence or related to some weird thing, it's always doable by changing the mesh, like change uh, change a mesh to a reasonable value will always help. Uh, I would strongly suggest you follow my mesh logic. So probably you, you will have, you won't have that much problems with it. So thank you for listening to the tutorial.